All right. Getting everything organized on my desk. It's been... Oh, a long morning. That's for damn sure. O-F-C-R-A four slash four slash 24. I think I've been dating all my stuff as 23 on my sticky notes like a goober, but oh well. <laughs> you do what you gotta. Let me go ahead and adjust my volume here. Today, uh, OFCRA is going to be the only stream. Uh, Pog, I'm going to take a week off from, and that's mainly because of some IRL stuff going on. Um, but I've also been using it to my advantage to get a lot of additional stuff done. But we'll give a few minutes to let everyone uh, funnel in on the viewership side, and then we'll go ahead and go over what today's operation is. Today we got this, tomorrow we've got FNF, we've got... A custom uh, set of Arma 3 uh, minigames fighting for some uh, Reaction Forces keys, and then we've got some uh, Daisy to play. <laughs> and uh, I've got other stuff on that front to deal with, but ooh, we've got a lot to work on. Uh, mainly, I'm just trying to get ahead on scheduling everything and seeing how all that goes. It's this month of April. I. <laughs> It's going to end up becoming one of my busiest months uh, to date. I mean, I'm trying to remember when else I have had this much to do, but, I mean, good God, if I were to look at my schedule real quick, I want to do a head count real quick. Normally, I judge how busy I am based off of how many different communities I'm uh, doing work for. So let me just do a head count here. My own, 506. Hellfire, TOC, we brought MCOs back as well, but I'm not counting that. The co new contracting gig stuff, which is replacing cog work, a commission for Spearhead, Revy's community. And it looks like that is it on my schedule. I don't think I counted fifth yet. Yeah, no, I didn't. Yeah, yeah, so Send that's five. That's eight different. Six. <laughs> Oh, and Pog, yeah. No, nine different communities I'm working for this month. Oh. My God, that is... Whoa. <laughs> Dark Horseman, thanks for the nine-month reason. I hope you keep enjoying the operation so we get a nice kick out of this scenario. And, of course, that's not involving the, you know, two to four PvP communities I work with and all this other crazy shenanigans. So I am really trying... Over the next two weeks, again, I got some IRL BS I got to take care of with um, my family home and whatnot. But I'm really just trying to get everything down and go forward with it. And it sucks, too, because in two days is uh, my cake day. But ain't no rest for the wicked, so. <laughs> Razor, I think you're referencing your slotting for tomorrow's mini game op. There will be no sleeping bags provided. I apologize. But nonetheless, let's go ahead and go over our PvP operation here today, guys. So we're sitting at about 121 players on the team speak, so this is roughly going to be like a 65v55. And let's go ahead. If you use the exclamation point mission command, you'll get a really funny image here of uh, the two factions fighting. Let me go ahead and put the prediction goal up for you guys to be able to bet on each other. Who will win this OFCRA match? Blue 4 is going to be the Portuguese. I don't know how to spell Portuguese, because I am illiterate, so I'm just going to copy and paste it. And I don't actually remember who's attacking or defending, but it's fine. But Op4 is going to be the MPLA, which, I'm going to be honest, the only reason I know about the MPLA is because it was from, uh, I think Call of Duty had the MPLA somewhere? <laughs> But nonetheless, we'll go ahead and set that up for a 15-minute timer, guys. And we'll go ahead and go over the operation today. I think I just had a little stutter. But anyway, uh, Blue 4 being the Portuguese, Ob 4 being the MPLA, basically an African militia here. Ten seconds we go in game. All right, so they're about to that's get things so started. There it is, and that's my TFAR plug-in kicking out. Yeah! Jesus. Well, they sound excited to play PvP today. That's a great thing. Blue 4 starting in two different areas here. We've got one on an airfield. Looks like they've got a C-47. And I think that is the new T-21. Uh, if ever it comes in here, because he's the one that's made uh, these mission files, he can tell me. But this is one of the 3CB faction planes, at least, I think. And then we've got uh, twin 50 cals on the side, and then this is meant to be uh, air assault for these paratroopers. Here we got M P um, M45s, actually. Uh, so we just submachine guns. We got some AR light. Um, also... 
think there's only AR-10s, but That's I could be two. wrong. With two shots. And they've got Igla launchers on Op4. That's cute. But we got some M72 laws in play as well. Welcome to communication bias. <laughs> so yeah, um, by the way, there's no body armor in this op, and there's limited radio communications. So if you get shot like once or twice, depending on the caliber, you're dead. Fun fact. But otherwise, uh, rest of these guys, we've got some Uzis in play. We've got some G3, or G1A3 rifles. We've got some M79 grenade launchers. Oh, that's funny. Trying to see if there's yes. anything else noteworthy here. Nope, just the submachine gunners with everything. So we got a 50 cal car, a second 50 cal car. We got some 50 cal trucks, some transports. Uh, with a lot of, just a lot of 50 cal on everything. Uh, 50 cal on 113s, 50 cal transport trucks. But the main battle rifle just seems to be the G3, which I believe is a German weapon. Then you got Uzis for a submachine gunner roll. MG3s in play for the auto rifleman. I'm not seeing any sort of marksman roll, and occasionally we do have an M72 gunner. <laughs> it's not a 72, it's an M79, my bad. And then let's go ahead and look at Op4 here. Op4 are gonna be our MPLA on defense here. Uh, we've got some Dishkas on some BTR-40s. Their main rifle appears to be... Uh, oh, hey, that's crazy. We've got uh, SP... We have an SPG-44, which in my opinion is the first ever assault rifle, um, other than the FG-42, but they're German made from World War II. You got RPDs in play, that's new from the latest 3CB factions update. There's one of the Igla Gunners, they've got SKSs. We have some AK-47s in play as well. RPG-7s Sorry, in play. Is that an M1 Garand? <laughs> yeah, he's got an M1 Garand back there. We got some RPKs in play. So MPLA definitely a lot more varied in weaponry, but it's 762 by 39 versus 762 by 54 for the blue four guys. So a lot of the blue four weaponry should insta kill if it's in center mass or head. Uh, Mat 49 submachine guns. Not seeing anything else that's new here. Here's another Igla team. Looks like they only took one. The team leader has the uh, STG 44. We have a T-34 tank in play. And it looks like the crewmen only have handguns. That's interesting. We have some basic transport trucks, more BTR-40s with those dishkas. So it's going to be a really big HMG-style match. I'm not seeing any M79 equivalent for Op4. And again, with no body armor, those M79s are actually going to be really effective. Actually, no, I take that back because OFCRA has a special mod that weakens uh, explosives and grenadier weaponry. So not going to be as effective unless it's practically a direct hit, but it'll be a good suppression weapon or something good to fire into buildings. We got these random barricades around. But let's go ahead and actually cover the objectives here. So Blue Four's objectives are to destroy two ammo trucks. I think these are the two ammo trucks here. Yep, the uh, basic transport trucks, but they've got a bunch of uh, cargo in the back. they got a sign in the back to indicate that they're transporting something explosive. But, I mean, in terms of everything else that's on the field, we also have four static HMGs. Interesting. But in terms of everything else that's on the field, that's definitely what we've got going uh, for the objective here. But they have to be destroyed by the 50-minute mark. And it looks like Op4 could theoretically drive those anywhere, but I think they're going to keep them in the AO. Uh, and then if you protect or destroy both of the ammo trucks by the end of the game, you get a three-point bonus. And then if you capture the village of Gatum, you get four points. So whoever has more people in this uh, big AO by the end is going to get that uh, point variation. So ammo trucks are nice, but... I mean, in terms of what's the maximum we can score, nine points total, so whoever can get five points first is essentially going to win, but you're not going to be able to get five points until the end of the game. So this is one of those objectives where there is a, you know, a nice, a small, but a nice variation of points, but I, I don't think it's going to be close. It's going to be whoever basically controls the central town by the end is going to uh, be the winner there. So I think they have the plane to basically scout for those... Uh, ammo trucks and blue four will just move on them accordingly so we'll just have to see how things go zam quoting the death to the mpla quote from cod that i know it by yep all right but otherwise i mean this should be a fairly simple pvp run i mean compared to last week for ofcra where they were fighting over pineapple pizza this is definitely gonna be an interesting turn of events 
But nonetheless, we will see how things go. It's cool. Ale ja i załatwiłem, że mam BTR w mózgu. Ale tam to BTR. No tam to BTR. O tym, o tej mówicie. No właśnie. No, 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 no. no dogadałem się z nimi i oddali nam ją. I don't even know what language that is, but let's go ahead and look at Blue Force options here. Their main attack force is coming from the north. That kind of limits them in this town because there is a lot of wetland and riverway up here. Um, looks like the wetland has actually been mostly dried up for this scenario, except when you go a little further to the left. So there is a lot of options for Blue Four to kind of come in here and assault through this little wetland low ground. Uh, or they could go all the way around. They do have crossing points. They could come up to over here and then try to utilize the single crossing points over here to get in, but that has the risk of bottlenecking their forces. This is like a 65 v 55 though. So both sides have like a, almost a platoon to platoon and a half strength of elements so i mean at least four to six squads to work with per, si per side that's quite a bit to go for uh and then blue four could also go all the way around and assault from the major areas over here i'm gonna be honest i've seen kujari done in quite a few pvp scenarios both in fnf and uh, i think a few times in ofcra but mainly in fnf there's at least been two or three fights in this city the big pitfalls I see forces do when they attack this zone is trying to cross the riverbeds. I don't know why I keep seeing it, but forces that directly want to cross the river right next to a town usually end up dead. Uh, because the defenders have the forces to reach out, they could easily put a bottleneck out here and out here to hold the rivers and then the remaining forces out here leave maybe one or two squads for internal security uh, maybe some lookouts for the river right here, but after they identify where Blue 4 is assaulting from, uh, right, whoop, view distance just got bumped up. I mean, we can actually just set it to lawn right here anyway. Uh, but after they figure out where Blue 4 is coming from, they can, let's say Blue 4 is attacking from over here. They could send this force around and flank and then fold this force in and have the back security set for these guys to pull back if needed. If they attack us from over here, they could gradually pull back and then they could send this force around and hit Blue 4 as they come in. If they attack from the riverways, uh, that's kind of tough actually for Op4 to counter that one because that would require them to cross the river. And if they bite off more than they can chew on that side, which is likely because this is already a smaller area, it would be very hard for them to pull back. So I would just say Op4 just holds the damn river, brings up reinforcements, keeps guys on the back line, and they hold from there. And right off the bat, we see Op4 moving things out. They also do have the tank. I'm gonna be honest though, I would put the tank in a position to lock down an MSR. So I would put it somewhere, hopefully where the force can partially cover it, but put it in a spot where it can watch any forces come down a long road and try to create a fatal funnel off of that road. The tank shouldn't be put on the side of a river given a large area to overwatch with because A, it's gonna be very unlikely for it to find anywhere to hit, so the best place to put it are positions where Blue Force is gonna be moving in on. And B, if you put it in a place where a lot of eyes could potentially see it, but the tank, you know, has limited vision, uh, it's just gonna be more likely that the tank is spotted early on and engaged. But you've got Op4 sending forces out. Looks like they're gonna be holding this area up here and potentially this area over here, or they might go even further out and try to catch Blue Four as they move in. That's another risky thing you could do with the tank is just have it tr barrel down the MSR and hope you catch enemy forces out of position, just take them out immediately. <sighs> but we do see the BTR 40s all around. We've got the ammo trucks trying to be hidden. I'm gonna be honest, I would hide those in two different areas of the city. One being in here, the other is the tricky one. I'd try to hide it under a tree or something at that point. Um, you could also hide it in these little uh, slits right here. And they got fairly good building cover. They're only gonna be exposed from the way you drive them in, which is just internal to the city. So it's not too, too bad. It's just if you store them too close, then if you lose that spot, you're kind of SOL. But meanwhile, Blue Four has taken off with their combat plane. And again, it's a twin 50 cal. It's not going to really be doing much this scenario. Uh, you got Rigel flying, and he's a pretty decent pilot. And we did see, uh, I think it was Oddball and someone else in that World War II mission a few weeks ago, where the Germans just absolutely annihilated the Soviet forces in probably one of the most brutal PvP matches I've ever seen. But 
uh, with 50 cal, I mean, his best bet is probably going to be trying to find and snipe any vehicles on transport. Uh, 50 cal, the rate of fire, it's going to be really hard for him to hit any specific infantry targets unless they're all grouped up. But, I mean, that could definitely be a good harassing feature, too. But again, he's mainly going to be scouting to see where Op4 is deploying. And then you've got a pretty solid air assault. Um, no, airborne. Air assault would be helicopter. Uh, airborne force. They're going to be probably doing a lay low insertion because they have those backpacks. <laughs> so we'll just have to see how they go. And they got, I think, AR-10 556s. Crazy Everick isn't here, but I'm pretty sure that's the new T-something-something plane. But I'm I'm always a sucker for having more uh, flight models in this game. I mean, we, we lucked out with Sab having a, a new plane mod that allowed me to have that one plane from Siege of Jadictville <laughs> to be able to simulate that properly. We have the next MCO also scheduled. I think it's for next weekend, but it's going to be an Australian uh, Vietnam era one. But I think with my current schedule, I could very well bring back MCO into it once a month. Um, if not once a month, then, you know, 40 to 45 days. But, you know, I, I missed having those large scale ops with multiple different communities and bringing everyone together. So I'm going to keep that going. But... I don't know. YouTube-wise, there's a lot of ideas I have. I just need to give myself the time to do it. And we already have someone dead. Uh, we have a problem with white side. So it looks like the plane, if you notice, it's bouncing. A problem with white side. I, I think white side tried to mate with the plane, and that's why the plane's bouncing around like that. And, uh, yeah. Guys, I, I know there's a lot of interesting images on the internet depicting planes in various positions with anthropomorphic parts, but please do not have sex with mechanical objects. They will hurt you, and they very may potentially kill you. So, this has been Lessons with Liru. Now you know. The more you know. Little rainbow thing in the background, you know. <laughs> Everick, since he's 28, thanks, buddy. I was waiting for you to show up and remind me what that was. That's one of your newer assets, uh, actually from the latest update, if I recall correctly. But how are you doing, broski? The plane is mounting him. Yes, even so, don't don't do things with the planes, okay? Please, it's it's not going to end well for you or your butt. All right. All right. So we see that the ammo trucks have been separated by about a block. I mean, yeah. I feel like they could have hidden them a little bit better because this is still kind of open for the plane to see them, especially that one. But, you know, I guess they just didn't want to use any of the underpasses or anything on the side. Maybe they thought putting them over here would expose them too much to those hills in these areas at least. Uh, they're kind of protected from any RPG fire from any other direction. So I get the strategy of putting them back here. Since you probably couldn't be able to drive it into these little areas because this is too thin and then those uh, little stairwells block those routes. So, again, I can see the logic in what they've chosen. You can also wedge it in here if you wanted to. It just does leave a little bit of an opening from over there. But, uh, you know, c'est la vie. Alright, so Op 4, we see that they've done exactly what I thought they would. And they've set up a pretty nice defensive area on every single crossing point around. Really trying to figure out where Blue Four is coming from and then really not leaving anything in the town because they know that a river assault would be pretty suicidal for the player base to follow on Blue Four. Blue Four, meanwhile, they've separated into multiple different assault waves. And that's pretty smart on Blue Four because the one weakness of having an entire attack force go in is if the defenders realize that they can just pull forces around bring them around to flank you on the side or even a rear attack. So by doing a pincer, that keeps everything on a front line uh, basically separated because they're going to all be engaged at the same time. The trick, though, is to attack the enemy lines at the same time, which... I always harbor on, you know, being really important for when you do a pincer attack. But in this situation, Blue 4 is genuinely not going to know where Op 4 is. I mean, we just had a little bit of gunfire from down here, so maybe Blue 4 could have had eyes on that and watched the tracers come up. But oftentimes, he isn't looking in the direction he's receiving fire from. Uh, and he's only a single pilot, so he's going to be focusing on, you know, positioning his aircraft as well. So it's going to be really, really hard for Blue 4 to pull off an assault when they don't know where uh, the Op 4 battle lines are. So it's very, very likely that one group is going to engage Op 4 early. Op 4 then might try to close forces around it and then, you know, bring in another force. And maybe as the force is coming around, they'll run into each other or it'll open up a gap for Blue 4 to go right into the town. I mean, it's just... 
when you have the fog of war like this, it's very, very difficult to see what is potentially going to happen. Op 4 have this massive everything around strategy to try to figure out where Blue 4 is, and Blue 4 is attacking at least two or three separate directions based on the fact we have a force here, a force here, and a force here to basically maximize their chances of getting a force into the town to find those ammo uh, vehicles and destroy them. And really, it's just going to be up to luck on who runs into who first and then who capitalizes on it without potentially running into another enemy element. And this means that who's Blue Force Commander? Depso is going to be relying on the group commanders of whoever is in charge of these squads to go in and do stuff. But I, I want to be clear because I know, again, we spend a lot of ops and PvP up here in the spectator interface harboring on the attacker for not unifying their attack properly or coordinating the timing of their attack on a fixed objective. Like they'll have, let's say, Op 4 was only defending this town. This force would come in and they'd engage force before, let's say, this force came in and was ready. When there's a single fixed position and they know where the attackers are, then by all means, there's no excuse for them not being able to coordinate their attack properly. But when it comes to not knowing where shit is, then you can't really fault them. Uh, Alexander, I think, just fell out of the guard tower there. I just heard the tank shoot. And I'm pretty sure he just fired a tank shell at the plane. Also, the emblem's floating on this, so if they angle it, a same. Yeah, this is right behind the boost. No, no, right, 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 right. It's up. It's They're trying to organize this tank to shoot a plane down. That's. I bet you Rigel's gonna potentially go around and try to engage that tank, but now I think. He's going to be able to tell Blue 4 exactly where that tank is. I'm going to be honest, this is a really good tank a spot for uh, coverage here because they can watch that MSR. It's a little further back, That's though, so they can't that. specifically watch it, but at least they can immediately drive up and try to capitalize on that open field. But that tank lacks infantry support. So we'll have to see how things go. I want to see Rigel come around and actually do a gun run on that thing, but the tank clearly doesn't know where uh, where the plane went. Yeah. So I think yeah. he's potentially circling around maybe to line up a gun run on it. Or he's just flying over here to try to figure out a good line to come in on that tank. Yeah, I agree. Dual 50 cals won't do much, but you can still partially disable a 34. Mainly it's a uh, gun top, and if you can pull it out of the fight, that's nice. But at the same time, it's only going to be good to do that when the fight's actually going on. If you see it again, tell me. So I think Rigel is flying over this position because he's trying to bait Op4 to shoot at him. That way his friendly forces locally can echolocate the bullets because he's already had some success with getting these forces over here to shoot at him. So I would assume that's been his uh, primary plan, is just baiting out the enemy to engage him. And that's smart. Fly over enemy positions, have them shoot at you, and you can go, okay, I was shot at over here, I was shot at over here. You might not be able to see where you were shot at from, but at least you have intel to say, all right, there's probably enemy forces over here, there's enemy forces over here. I haven't been getting shot at from the village, though, so, you know, maybe the air assault group might just go, F it, and try to drop right on top of the uh, the village itself. Are his friendlies bats? Yeah, I know. I knew someone would crack that joke because it's an echolocate, but you get what I mean. <laughs> Look at this Chad with an RPG. He it. wants yeah. to. Yeah. He definitely wants to. But Blue Force probably going to spend another 10, 15 minutes maneuvering. Looks like the C-47 is up in the air. He's got 10 people to jump out with. I'm going to be honest. If that T-28 constantly flies over this village and doesn't take any fire... Because you got to remember, he's also flying low because he knows that there's Igla gunners on the ground. So as long as he's flying really low... Even though that puts him into AAA fire and harm's way there, the Eaglas can't lock on him. The tank just tried again. That's That will crack me up if they actually make that shot. I'm going to be honest with you. But if that's the case, I'd honestly just 
put the plane above 100 meters and land right on top of this town if they're not taking fire from it. Because logically, if you're flying over areas outside of the town and you're taking fire, but then you fly over the village and you don't take fire, at what point do you think it's safe to assume that there isn't anyone in the village itself where the actual objectives are, you know? Now, let's say you fly over everything and you only take fire from one spot, but out of, you know, every other position where, you know, 60, 50 enemies could be, then you just know that they have an order not to shoot at you to give away their positions, and it was just one chuckle fuck. And there's the Igla. That's what I was worried about. So Rigel overstayed his welcome a little bit. He's now flying low and hightailing it out of here. Uh, I hope his instruments aren't busted. He might just be trying to blitz out, but we'll see if he can make an emergency land and potentially fix that up. But, you know, now that they've lost that ability to do recon, back to my point, if you take fire from three or four different enemy positions in different areas, then that's safe to assume that they don't have an order to hold their fire, and if they see you, they're just shooting at you. So then by that logic, if you then fly over the actual objective and don't take fire, that means it's empty. Lessons with Liru. If you ever wanted a PvP uh, or command in a PvP scenario, <laughs> I can tell you how it's done. Don't get me wrong, though. It was really, really satisfying. Like, even though I was struggling with it, the PvP match I was actually a part of like a week ago where I was literally a, a grunt. It was Russians versus Ukraines. And I'm like, all right, they're going to come from this direction. And then they came from that direction. I'm like, all right, now they're going to come from that direction. And then they came from that direction. And I was just pretty much able to predict what the enemy was going to do from literally a single rifleman's perspective on the ground. It was, it was a bit of an ego boost. I'm not going to lie. But regardless... We're still waiting on Blue Ford to do their maneuvering. I don't fully agree with... Well, no, I take that back. A few guys running around the river just checking things out to stretch out the reconnaissance information net that uh, Op4 is trying to form here so they can try to figure out what's going on. That's all right. It's just, you got to remember, if you stretch your forces out too far, it's going to be much harder to coordinate them to pull everything back here. Soygoy, I would say this is probably 1960s or 70s. Weaponry is Blue 4 are Portuguese, Op 4 are the MPLA, uh, an African faction. Blue 4's primary battle rifle, I've seen some AR-10s, which I think are meant to mimic like M16, A well no, then they'd use M16 A1s. Um, but basically like CAR-15, 5.56, like, early gen assault rifles for the M16 platform. Uh, and then they also have G3s, which was, I think, one of the first West German battle rifles. Because they also have those 20-round mags. And then I'm only seeing M113s and BTR-40s and a T34. So it's definitely, you know, Vietnam age in terms of timing. So I'd say 60s. Angola, 1971. Okay, little. Li I was a decade off, but yeah, so work your way up and then get onto, get onto that all the things considered. Land, about meters away. We'll then cross the river back Thanks, that way. Thanks, Sam. How are you doing? Nemesis knows what he's talking about because if we get attacked, okay. he runs. He helps run a PVP community, here. but you got these guys okay. talking battle like, strategy, we'll like, rice like, around yeah, the yeah, side. Then, then are, we'll, but I do appreciate squad leaders, and you can tell he's a squad leader because he has the radio backpack, little antenna sticking out. But he's trying to coordinate with his guys what to do in case they take a fight. Now, what I don't agree with right now is how restless Op4 is being right now. These guys had a really nice defensive position here, and now they're mounting up and moving forward. And I don't really know why. This is going to create a gap in the defensive line that Blue4, unfortunately, is in a really good spot to exploit. So I'm worried that, again, because I saw up here we had a few guys running off. If Op4 really pushes their forces out too far, that's going to increase the time it's going to take them to run back and get in proper defensive positions. So for now, we're just going to have to wait this out and see. Check the form, yeah. Yeah, I feel that, Nemesis. I feel that. I know, Angola 1971 has tech from the 50s and 40s anyway, so. I mean, I again... Op 4, we do have some M1 Garands in play. We do have some STG 44s, T34 tank. No surprise, right? 
I swear to God, they actually just tried to hit the damn plane again. That means they have to have ammo to burn at that point. I mean, you see that it's smoking, yeah, though. Yeah. So just let the Igla gunners hit it, because they've got two Igla gunners with two rounds each, but I think they only took one spot. So the Igla gunner only has a second one to work with, and he's probably going to reserve it for hitting that plane. Meanwhile, I'm trying to see where that... Okay, they're loitering all the way out there. Yeah. So that has My a squad of ten paratroopers. All the boys to the yard, and they're like, "It's better than yours, damn right! It's better than your C can teach you." But I have to charge. Ah, <sighs> when you've been on this channel for long enough, you know how to make the freaking bot say whatever you want it to. Good God, Azariah. Well, AK Lone Survivors, thanks for the 42 month resub. Thanks for all the work you do on the channel, and I hope to see you tomorrow because I need you and What's That to be uh, my staff for my episode of Total Drama Arma when we go through a bunch of mini games tomorrow to give away some Reaction Force keys. But nonetheless, thanks for all your support, man. Hope you keep enjoying the operations. You know, we get a nice kick out of this scenario. And Drunk Fire Bear, how you doing, buddy? Thanks for the 29 month resub as well. Thanks for all your support over the months. Actually, years at this point, right? 29 months is quite a bit of time. But I hope you keep doing the operations. I do hope you get a nice kick out of this scenario. All right, first contact's potentially going to be over here. We've got a five man op four team versus a force, honestly, five to six times their size. That is three different, no, four squads. This is an entire platoon coming down on them. Oh boy, can these guys hold? Wait to see if Blue 4 comes up. Seven and a half years, good god, Nem. You've been around for too long. Gregory gets taken out. Audrey Sip also gets taken out. Well placed grenade, gets caught in the trees. Smoke grenades going out. Op 4 took a KIA. Oh, but a really well placed grenade. Takes everyone out. Pingus is down. Shadow is the only one up. Picked off by Wojek there. Got some additional fire coming up, but it looked good for that Op 4 group. Uh, VGR message Azariah through DMs on uh, Twitch, and if you want to get on Vander from the Discord, just talk with him about it. And Drunk Firebear giving Nemesis a sub. Drunk Firebear is one of the newer sub Santas <laughs> trying to follow in Monadic's legacy, but. Nonetheless, man, I appreciate your support. Hope you keep enjoying the operations. I do hope you get a nice kick out of this scenario. Looks like this 113 took an AT mine because I can't see the tank isn't at an angle to engage. It definitely sounded like an explosive. The tank is, I think, aggroed from that AT explosive. I'm trying to see if there's any more in the dirt that I can see, but it's rare to see. Ah, there's a second AT mine right there. Send in GOAT Team 6. Hold on. Now. We also have a Send truck destroyed. That's a, excuse me, a car now. destroyed back there. I thought that was potentially the fighter going down, but no, there was a mishap over there, Send and that's giving away their position. Op4 knows there's a force now. now coming up there as well. And it looks like we still have a survivor. Pingus woke back up. Using the Mat 49. And Mr. Perfect Jeff being a sub Santa as well. If you got a sub for Mr. Perfect Jeff, make sure you thank him. Otherwise, hope y'all keep enjoying the operations. And I do hope you get a nice kick out of this scenario. Ah, I see. Oh, well, it happens, VGR. You can always remake your account. Nonetheless, Pingus goes down. And again, those guys were fighting a force literally like five to six times their size. We have another garrison going out here. The tank has pushed up and is starting to shell this position. Rounds are falling a bit short, but we'll see if that T-34 can adjust its aim. Another round coming in. We do see some blood right here, so it is causing damage to this blue four element pulling back. 
antes de que disparara. We do see some crossfire shots from these guys engaging that one position. So I'm a little worried about... Uh, well, hmm. So this force is the most dangerous. It's right next to the final objective. Op4 hasn't realized that there is such a massive force right here to counter them. So these guys could still break in, get the objective area, and take things down. Alexander's been uncon for a while. That's pretty sad. Uh, but it looks like these guys are doing their pullback uh, to try to reinforce the town. We'll see if the other groups get the message. But this could cause a rout on all these other forces, and then Blue 4 could have a finalized um, and a very nice unified attack on this area here. This group I'm a little worried about because that tank does have HE rounds and it is causing quite a bit of damage. You do have this squad right here. Blue 4 could potentially send half of that force over here to relieve the infantry right here and unify more of their forces, hit that tank, and then come in from the north at the cost of giving Op4 more time to reinforce that rear position. But again, OFCRA are a 90 minute round, so you can play more tactically like that. This force versus this force, I think Op4 knows that they're over there because they could see that smoke on the horizon here, whatever exploded, which again, I think was a car with the 50 cal on it. So they definitely know something's over there and they're gonna wait for it unless ordered otherwise. But at this point, I think Op4 has enough information to tell that Blue Force coming in in three areas. The question is, what can they do about it? You got the three man team over here. They're gonna try to do a flank around, but crossing this open area is going to be very suicidal. They're gonna have to get very lucky to cross it without anyone noticing, but it's possible. Tank firing short a bit, but I mean, that's a three or four man crew at that point, but we see five man team dead right there. Some of the blue four guys that assaulted that position are dead. You also have a third one there. So right now, blue four, if we were to talk about bodies alone, definitely winning here, but I feel like that could change soon. Pierce is not leading, Depso is leading, Blue 4, Op 4 is being led by Jonathan. I don't know, I'm worried, I mean, these guys have a river to work with, so that's going to help slow down Blue 4 in ter terms of moving in, but I'm worried that, you know, with a big enough force, these guys can just potentially get bulldozed as well, and then you're going to have a lot of Op 4 forces caught out of the position. All right, this I do not agree with one bit. They literally just dropped them off right on top of a position with an enemy squad, which, granted, they didn't know that squad was there, but... I'm trying to get into Depso's head. I think Depso put the forces here because he assumed that he's given enough time for Op4 to set up new battle lines to where he knows that he's had engagements from. So by his thought process, these guys, these guys shouldn't be here. And you see Watts Watts there get instantly headshotted for landing on that squad. So I get why Depso did this, but at the same time, uh, there's there's two different ways you can do an airdrop, in my opinion. You're either going to do it right on top of the objective as a shock value, or a rush, or you're going to put it out on the outside and then have them move in. Now, I feel like if they were to do it over here, that would have been a better call because then they could have run up, they could have done a tried to do a sneaky river cross and then come in. But doing it over here, he was intentionally trying to put the squad right here so they can then immediately go in, thinking that again, Op4 moved up to the north and that just didn't really suit him. At the same time though, I'm trying to see how Depso would have known that that squad was there and there isn't really a way from two because I don't think those guys ever engaged the plane. It was these groups up here. So, that's just one of those bad circumstances you can't really blame them for. But Yilmaz, thanks for 20 month resub, my friend. I hope you keep enjoying the operations. I do hope you get a nice kick out of this scenario. I feel like the tank should be holding its fire at that point, waiting for an Op4 element to have an engagement. Because these guys are going to soon call that force in. They can have the tank come up and assist. But at the same time, again, with no infantry security, these guys are going to be able to get those M72 laws right on the tank and take them out. But I feel like that tank's just kind of wasting its ammo for no good reason. 
Meanwhile, looking at the rest of the force, yeah, you also have the uh, C-47 up there, I think, just trying to draw fire and draw aggro at this point. Blue 4, I saw there was a few up for knockouts over here, so half the airdrop squad has reformed, and they got some holdouts just on various little outside areas there. Send in go Team 6. Yeah. You got Blue 4 do a bit of an open Looking field barely. crossing. I've been enjoying the ops They're on the YouTube engaged. while LOL School has been destroying my brain. Thank yeah. you for the coming background content. ASMR stream when? Flavit, I don't know about the ASMR stream, but I appreciate your 39 month resub nonetheless. Hope school is treating you well, even though I do remember that school was a bit of a pain in the ass. But nonetheless, hope you keep enjoying everything. Hope you get a nice kick out of this PvP scenario. So I think these guys are going inland to hit the tank. Funny enough, they're going to run into this squad here, though. And I think the tank was just informed that that squad existed because you see it now panically trying to turn and force the gun over there. He just had some AT launch over here as this group comes around on the rear, but it looks like Blue 4 are actually going to be able to hunker this uh, area down here despite those losses because they did have 10 uh, paratroopers there. Though Pierce is leading the defense here, he is up two kills. I'm just trying to figure out what that fire is. That might be a rifle grenade. Yeah, those are rifle grenades on those, so they're firing those up. They sound like a vanilla Mazes, which is throwing me off a little bit, but some mods uh, do use those sounds. Looks like we have a Dishka BTR moving over to try to relieve what remains of that squad. But notice something here. There's a massive amount of Blue 4 forces over here, and there is nothing between them and the AO. So this is really worrisome at this point. Meanwhile, this Blue 4 element definitely getting a bit stalled. And this Blue 4 element is also running into this squad here, so the fights are pretty even. Rigel's doing his best to try to come in and provide support, though I think he just fired closer to friendlies than enemies at that point. That grenade did a really good job. Instantly knocking out two, killing one. Rick Hunter getting a kill on the other side. Oh, that's brutal, man. So Blue 4 on this attack, really falling apart. That's going to give Op4 the numbers to turn around and assist. You got this group coming in, but Op4 are maximizing the use of this river to keep Blue 4 at bay, despite Blue 4 having the number superiority there. You have another airstrike coming in, but again, it's completely off. He fired off to the right of where the MPLA forces were. And again, this is an Op with no body armor, no... Uh, <laughs> Nothing to protect you against the bullets, so if you get hit by a, you know, a 762, you're you're kind of out and about at that point. On the floor, bleeding out. But anyway, Op4 looks like they are foregoing this position. They're pulling back on foot. Maybe because of what's going on over here, Op4 want to reconvene their lines. The tank just drove off. There could be a lot of reasons for all of that. I think they finally decided to bring Alexander to a medic. And they potentially have those guys going back to grab them, but Blue 4 over here don't really have a way to move into the AO, so those forces are going to be kind of stopped for the rest of the fight. Meanwhile, I was about to look at the remaining Op 4 elements to see if they could pull anything, but we just saw one get taken out, one is Uncon, and we just have two remaining around here. Can Goose or Nolik do anything? Goose was the one that hit the plane with the Igla, but it didn't take it out. What I'm a little concerned about, though, is what is Blue Force plan with these forces? You got these guys that folded over here to this Op 4 Overwatch position. That position, I think, folded in the town instead. So you're going to have, gosh, one, two, three, five squads now. The platoon is pretty much intact with the air assault, uh, airborne squad, excuse me, come in and just try to do a unified assault on this position. Pupper, I think, just got taken out. Goose is still moving around, getting into a fight with Cameron. Goose with the SKS trying to throw a grenade as Cameron's coming around with that AR-10. And Killer comes up and assists. That's a tough fight, though. Because these AR-10s, they appear to have those 20-round magazines that cut off with that little diagonal there. But the SKS only has 10 rounds. So out, <laughs> that much of an ammo difference usually does uh, 
make quite a significant difference. I mean, that's why an M2 is usually always better than a Dishka, or even a Cord, because the Dishka Cord only has 50 rounds, whereas the M2 usually has a full box of 100. So Daedalus is down right here. Marthen, the only blue four guy remaining. Something just exploded. Might have been some explosive satchels put back here, but Blue Four is now starting their assault. This is where it could get a little messy for Blue Four. Notice that it's only two squads, half of the platoon moving in as the other two are moving over to check on the airborne forces. I'm hoping to see these guys fall short somewhere. They don't actually push into the town just yet because if they try to move in, Op4 still has a decent amount of forces here to potentially push these forces back and then they could start defeating Blue 4 in detail if Blue 4 starts sending squads in at the same time. What I was talking about earlier with the fact that now there's a fixed target here, Blue 4 needs to properly coordinate to attack this with all their forces at the same time because if they don't, then Op4 still have a pretty solid chance to win this. So Blue 4 pushing that position, not realizing Op4 has kind of left that area here. You got some suppressive fire coming out. Blue 4 trying to now cross. They're going to potentially try to cross right here on that riverside, but looks like that squad pulled back because they were ordered to uh, hold this position. But this is where the plane's going to shine, that T-28, because now Op4 are going to be in buildings. They're going to be building fortifications in a nice open area, giving Rigel plenty of opportunity to line up some pretty nasty gun runs compared to the thick foliage of these jungles here to stop him from properly sighting out his targets. Every second that passes gives Op4 more time to reconvene their lines in the town, which granted gives more opportunities for Rigel to get pickoffs, but Blue 4 definitely had an advantage here and it is being squandered, but at the same time, they're just trying to reunify their lines so no forces are left out to dry. These guys, I think, came out to stop any force that was potentially pulling back. And I'm willing to bet these guys probably overestimated the amount of Op4 over here to prompt such a response. But I think they're thinking if they have enough Op4 out here, then they clearly shouldn't have enough over there because they have Op4 there and over here as well. So they probably only have a small amount for this force and then come in and bulldoze. But that's definitely changed. Op4's definitely tightened their defensive lines, and or at least they're trying to. We still have some forces on the outside. The one interesting thing is now going to be what is done with this tank. I feel like having this tank held in reserve and then push it up as soon as the assault begins and let it literally pound open areas with HE could really turn the tide for Op4 here. I'd say Blue 4 have the advantage again with numbers and bodies, but that is going to change. We've got at least eight or nine skulls on Op4. Actually, we'll do a quick head count here. But, I mean, you can just see the full big squads that Blue 4 have, but that's four, five, six, seven, eleven, and then I know there were more people in here, so three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, but again, one of those had like much more skulls, I think like three or six, to um, no, five or six total dead, and there's only three in two of those groups, so Op 4 have had more casualties so far, and Blue 4 did start with the number advantage. Yeah. And that's what I'm talking about. He tried to do a line right here. He might have, actually no, he did knock Wiki out. I'm surprised he's still alive because he's firing 50 cal. Well, let's see if he repeats that uh, attack run because you got Op4 all grouped up like this. They can do some pretty heavy damage. Now you got Blue4 moving up. More Op4 getting taken out. There we go. Yeah, I don't know why Op4 grouped up like that. We now have a KIA, a second KIA, and a third knockout. Blue4 trying to, actually no, Op4 trying to plant some explosive traps, but Blue4 are able to push him off of it. You do see a down Blue4 guy over here. I think he died to that explosion because that's an M79 down. But really nice gun runs by that plane. I think he's coming around to potentially do a third one. Really utilizing that fatal funnel right there. But his plane is smoking. 
So funny enough, that's made Op4 turn a lot of heads up, and instead of focusing on the outward perimeter here, Blue4, this group, because they ran into those guys, have slowed down, and that's giving time for this force to come in. These guys crossing the river, they're gonna come in on that angle. And Op4 still have a group out here, don't know what they've been doing. I guess they missed the order to pull back. So Blue4 now in a really good position to do a nice unified attack on this position. That's going to stretch the tank's position thin. Though they might have spotted some Blue4 on this hill right here. And now they're readjusting themselves. I don't know, seeing those uh, plane strikes there was rather devastating for Op4. These guys doing a great job of immediately starting to move to the objective. And then these guys holding the attack because they ran into that Op4 element now taking this more cautiously. Funny enough, I think that is the fact that there was Op4 up here just saved Blue4 because now these guys have slowed down. They're giving more time for these other two major elements to move in. You're gonna see a three-way attack at this rate. And then you got some elements back here. This Op4 group might trickle in, but it's going to be messy. And now this attack's beginning. The only hope, I'm gonna be honest, is if uh, Sifo here comes up. He's got an AK. Is he on two kills? Okay, I feel like he's gonna have a few grenades looted. He could easily do a massive chunk of damage on this force up here. Again, when you're doing a flanking attack and they don't know you're there, always open up with grenades to disorient them and then go for the pickoffs. Even better if you can pick up an enemy weapon to confuse audio ID, but he has that AK, but it's a 30 round AK. He's gonna have a good amount of ammo to work with. He just needs to resist going full auto with it, especially since there's no body armor. RPG fired up here, it was a miss. We might see some more uh, plane strikes over here, but now you got Blue4 getting into the town over here as well, making some great headway. Now that tank's also shooting, more RPGs going in, but they're short. All right, start up with those grenades, buddy. Resist the urge to immediately pull the trigger, just open up with grenades. He's not going to, he's gonna shoot them first. Yep. the lid. Anyway, vehicles destroyed. Vehicle down here got destroyed and got multiple casualties because you never bring a vehicle into your defensive line because when it cooks off, it kills everybody. But some people don't know that. And Rat Pick, I think, just bad fragged and killed the one dude that woke up. Amazing. Clearly. That's how PvP's done. <laughs> Anyway, Blue4 having a massive push in here. You got an Overwatch element covering the force coming in. These guys completely coming in as well. Tanks trying to drive around to figure out what's going on. This squad finally starting to enter as these guys are going around the north and flanking around. That's that same three-man team that was all the way out there. They've got no comms with anyone locally. Op4 ground command is also dead. He, funny enough, he was one of the dudes that died in the airstrike. What are we at time-wise? So there is nine minutes left to keep the ammo trucks alive for those two bonus points for either side. I'm gonna call it GG to Blue4 at this point. I really don't see. I love how they're still here even though this place has been hit by airstrikes multiple times and they haven't learned to disperse yet. That's what really baffles me. The fact that that plane's been doing strikes right there for the past few minutes in this literal same spot. And Op4 just, yeah, uh, haven't really learned at that point. I think this op just came down to Blue4 had a really nice three group assault on the objectives. Op4 never really got a chance to go around and engage something. A fourth angle was opened up. Great grenade throw. I love how he's, he, he woke up. That's the guy that's been unconscious for 20 minutes because he fell out of the tower and he just got a nice double kill. Literally flung a body out, blew someone up with a grenade. If he could get another grenade over the wall to cover it, that would be smart.
Ooh, a really nice air versus grenade there, but he was able to get a third kill before he went down. Even if Op4 goes to like the three or four to one ratio here, I think Blue 4 just have too many bodies at this point. Op4 took too many attrition fights because they spread themselves out too thin. And Op4 were able to get everything down. Now you got Blue 4 taking most of the town. They're moving in, they're finding where the vehicle caches are. This one now in Blue 4 hands. They just need to find something to dead it off. But even if the 50 minutes pass, I think Blue 4 is going to eventually blow up both ammo, ca uh, ammo vehicles and have full control of this town by the hour and a half mark. Nemesis, I wouldn't consider last week to be a major win for the attackers. That was literally one man's actions turning the tide in the last five minutes. But the previous one, where you had the Germans completely bulldoze the Soviets, that was a pretty crazy one, even though I think it was equally an attack and defense. You just had a rifle grenade fire into that T-34, and now it's mad and firing HE shells. It just got a kill. That was their first and only kill so far. Damn. Now you got that force coming in. Rifle grenades still firing onto the tank. It's doing minimal damage. Granted, they're hitting it. Oh, the tank just got disabled by a rifle grenade. Gun, I believe, is disabled. Oh, he's, he's unable to move it. He's blindly driving. They're just waiting for... He doesn't have the weapon. Prime Q-Boy's going to run up and get the final shot here. There it is. Right in the engine block. That's going to stop the vehicle. Now Blue 4 going to wait around for the crew to dismount or for the vehicle to explode. Which they're getting a little close for that, but... Up 4 have a final defensive garrison in the center. Real smart use of that HE at point blank. Unfortunately, Blue 4 wasn't close enough to uh, take it. Plus, I think the round actually yeah. went into the building and got partially absorbed by the building itself. More AT fire coming into this building Bonk. here. Op4, they had five. They're down to three up here. Bonk. And you still have that three-man group all the way out there and this group all the way out here as well. So this is going to have one of those uh, lawn end-offs because Op4 is going to trickle back in. Rat pick taken out on the rooftop. Let's have Grump and uh, Saigas here. They've taken a dish gun. They're now trying to penetrate the hull with that 14.5. Uh, no, it's a 12.7. Wow. Satchel went off. It killed a few blue four guys. Yeah, because the satchel's going to take out the entire block at that point. But I think two or three blue four guys just died in that explosion. And all of Op4 was just eliminated. Uh, I think blue four are going to have a perfect game. They just have to find this other ammo truck in the next few minutes. And I, I think they are at this rate. And even if they don't, they, they still win. This is GG. Sam jumps out and immediately jumps back in. Cuboid's waiting, waiting for the turret to auto-reload. What'd you guys think about that? Personally, it could have gone either way, but I was a little worried when I started seeing Op4 really stretching out the defensive lines more so when they were supposed to, because again, they didn't need to. Oh, he went airborne. They body back one of the dudes too, that's funny. But once Op4 started getting a little restless with their defensive line, that's when Blue 4 had really good opportunity to just, you know, continue their pushing and get everything killed. So Sam just got killed. 
Don't know if that was the AT round that just came in or what. Looks like he's in the driver's seat. Gunner's still sitting there. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Oh, no, it's part of the texture. I thought that was the go uh, gunshot that killed him, but nope, that's just internal textures. They could just put a satchel on that damn thing and call it a day. The funny thing about the 34s is I think they're from a cup model, and cup models are ever since the Ace update that instead of instantly killing the vehicle with uh, an AT shot, they would do these fancy cook-off effects. The cup vehicles just kind of, kind of, uh, kind of became invincible. <laughs> like, you can disable them, but to kill them is difficult. They're going to put an AT mine on it and then shoot the mine. That's funny. I'd assume someone has rifle grenades. Well, I got two minutes to figure it out. And then you got these four over here, and then that three-man team over there. There's eight op four remaining. <laughs> they're just okay, they're I'll, just I'll bringing the m72s yeah, i feel like they should be using one against this though because that's the actual oh someone found a satchel well he's got 90 seconds to cook it it's on fire. Clear. Yeah. The wow. fact that Lolo is still alive. Yeah, it's, it's dead. All right, hold. Everybody hold. Everybody hold. Hold fire. Hold fire. There goes the truck. And once again, we have people die from their own explosives. Ah, uh, yeah. It's, it's dead. It's dead. There's no one inside it? OK. Uh, yeah, sometimes, you know. Are you sure it's dead? We should maybe hit it a few more times. <laughs> Yeah, I'll shoot some more. All right, we're going back. 23rd, go back to uh, it's going, yeah. Understood. I think Twig just. Let me offload passengers from it. I'm pretty sure it's dead. He's, he's just hiding right, in there. Everybody... No, I think. I think Twig realizes that they just hit this with like four rockets oh. and he's still not dead, so they have to just wait for Lolo to feel like coming out. Yep, there's those two points. We can probably blow it up. Yep. Oh, you fucking. Oh my god! <laughs> I'm surprised Crazy didn't die to that. No, it's dead. I mean, that is why I was throwing satchels in the Star Wars op last night at ATSTs. Nothing works better than an ace explosion to destroy a vehicle. Completely. Alright. Oh, this is a five man team, not a four man team. So it still is eight to gosh. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four, twenty-five, twenty-six. It's eight to twenty-seven. Blue four have a three to one advantage. And right off that bat, we have an off four casualty. As we just have a sheer volume of fire coming up to these remaining MPLA forces. Flip for Flap, I think, realized that this was a really bad idea and has pulled back a little bit. They're not wearing Crocs, they're wearing sandals. Crocs weren't invented yet. And these three have also started picking a few forces off. You just have sheer suppressive fire coming up here at this point. And they decided, yeah, that was a bad idea. And they have uh, since started effing off. 
Look at Cuboid here. He's sick of these overwatching assets. He's gonna go take the fight to them. At the risk of getting shot in the back. Emil died. I think these chuckleheads meant to throw a smoke grenade. Because that's the second time I've seen Op4 throw a frag instead of a smoke. Yeah, they're trying to conceal their own position because there's no way they knew Cuboid was running up on them like that. But that was... That was just really bad luck for Cuboid, too. But yeah, no, it just works, right? <laughs> And you got Twig King with Banks and Duets and trying to push where those Op4 were because they want to wrap this game up. Now Oddball's going to run up there as well. Nah, 9,000 IQ play. Say what you want. I think that was a misinput, but I've seen crazier shit in this game, so anything's believable at this point. Delta's battle buddy. Oh, no, we got disconnected. Rizbo uh, crashed out. All right, so those guys are probably going to stay up there for a hot second unless Oddball comes up and takes them out. All right, I'm going to be honest with you guys. I am going to cover it for another 15 minutes, and I'm going to call it regardless because this is just going to be small skirmishes, and you can see that Op4 is just going to be doing the lawn pulling away play, not assaulting. But there's not really any good way that five players can assault a town with this many defenders there's there's no good angle because any of the closer angles are just going to have people guarding them like right over here because everything else is just open territory so it's kind of pointless at that point you know They're running all the way. Yeah, I don't. This shows me they might try to do a crossing and then go all the way around, which again, it's that's that's even more pointless. Got Delta trying to move around on his own. He's already being spot out. And again, there's just too many eyes in this town. They've got access to the rooftops and everything. They're just going to see whatever's moving and engage it. These guys, if they're going to move up this way, they're going to potentially get spotted by the forces coming out here. And if they cross the river, then it, eh, a little pointless at that point. Did the two planes land? You know, that's a good question. Rizbo? Ah, I see. So the plan was to get Rizbo right on top of the objective. And no one in Blue 4 is looking in the tap. Right. I'm just kidding. He respawned and he went back on his AI position. All right, I'm going to be watching these two because they're the closer ones on the objective. But again, they've all got they've got all this open area to potentially come up with. So, you know. Blue, yeah, TLDR of this mission, Op4 spread out too thin and didn't react quick enough to where Blue 4 was going. And actually, no, I take that back. They did react pretty well. It's just they were too spread out and they got picked off too much by three different assault groups coming in and it just kind of wrapped everything up and i guess the planes did have to land because it's they're not around anymore 
Rigel died trying to land. And the other guy's not even here. So, yeah, never mind. But, yeah, three kills for the plane. But Op4 kind of gave that to him. But even then, it's kind of funny. Okay, ah bah écoute on va là on est où là on fera le groupe 2 actuel on est par là non euh ouais c'est ça on, on est un peu plus maintenant on va bouger à l'ouest monsieur là ça ouais on est un peu plus on est à côté de la on va à l'ouest on va à l'ouest à l'ouest ouais à l'ouest on va passer au sud Alright, we're definitely gonna have a little bit of mission depth side, but I'm not gonna be uh, doing pog stuff because I've been having to deal with some IRL stuff. But we'll be back with pog with a new campaign for their contracting uh, next week, and I'll add some paper paint elements because, uh, you know. Alright. Yes, Valk will also show the garrison work that you've done everything with too, so. Ha! <laughs> Say lovey. Anyway, guys, I think I'm going to wrap it up here because you just have these four that are going to trickle in and get killed. Those two are going to trickle in and get killed. Maybe I'll miss the best PvP comeback in the world. Wait a second. We're about to watch Twig King get friendly fired. Never mind. Totally. I'm getting TK'd in the corner. Someone please tell them to watch their fire. <laughs> yeah, you can see how antsy the defenders are here. There ain't no way. Um, it would be dumb for them to come from the north given this bad slope and we have guys on those buildings uh, The only chance they really have of winning is going through the small buildings on the south side and trying to make a play um, So we're gonna patrol that way um, Hopefully run into contact if not we'll die with glory, okay? Yeah. Do you know why I like twig kid? He's smart he gets it. But he explains to his people I'm taking, uh, a patrol. We're gonna start his logic so they can um, learn. He's also taking an enemy AK to uh, disguise his audio ID, Morgan which is also smart. Um, it's not like he crashed, but like there was a full team down there. Yeah. It was yeah. one RW. Shit. Yeah. yeah. So, top four, I think, are just coming around yeah, on the guys, southern side to try to infiltrate in. Maybe. Okay. Uh, yeah, go ahead, keep eyes up. Um, we'll find some shit, I guess. <laughs> That's point people in body bags. Dude, if I get... Are they putting... Oh, my God, dude. The monkeys are running out of stuff to do. <laughs> I'll make sure we stay close to the town, commanding. Or we're not going to go too far. So, make sure we always have visual on the buildings, okay? Or do these two have RPKs and they're just going to engage from afar and force a suppressant fight? And those four are going to slowly trickle in. Wait, a vocal commander? No, never. Yeah, right? Rizbo already bandaging. Delta trying to funnel in here. If I have a mod as, do you want to pay out the uh, payout to Blue 4? Because here's the deal, if Op4 somehow come out and win, I'll reveal my face to pay people back for paying it out to Blue 4 early, but that's how... That's how guaranteed this is, okay?
So these guys are pulling back because they don't really have any other choice because the volume of fire is too heavy. I feel like Blue 4 right now is just reacting to whatever comes down to them. So technically nothing's coming in, but Op 4 hear the volume of fire in the town itself and they're not willing to push in because they don't want to risk it. I think Mondays just fell off the roof. But unfortunately, I don't think Blue 4 can totally rely on Op 4 stupidity. The enemy towards the South River, uh, edge of the woods, edge of the woods. Enemy towards the Twig, This guy's can calling him out. Can you hear me? Twig, can you hear me? Twig, can you hear me? All right, so these guys have started their engagement here. Backblast. Back Nothing gives a warm welcome like an M72 law. And that did knock out this one crewman over here. <laughs> but now you got Blue 4 pushing this position. Curious what happened to Twig. I think these guys might have engaged Twig or he might have gotten blue on blue. It's impossible to say at this point. Op four down to three on that side. You got keyhole through the woods? Yeah. It happens. No. Actually. These guys are pulling away from two dudes. Ah. Talk about a tease here. You just need Op4 to go in. They keep just trying to find a way in, but Blue 4 have way too many forces to go in at this point. How you doing, Pavecat? Uh, cardboard, you were right on the money with them, with the four-man team coming around from the south. I think you got drawn in from something else, but nah. If you continued south, you would have run right into him. Yeah, no, that's fair. All right, one of them gets picked off. Rizbo now coming around the other side. And those 15 minutes are coming up. We got four off four remaining. Uh, well, we had four off four remaining. Now there are three off four remaining. You know, sometimes the ability to cast a curse frightens even me. But, you know, I'm sure we'll keep with three for... Now there are two remaining. Two remaining, guys. Uh. Now, I've... Ahem. <clears throat> there weren't any op for over there. It's just Rizbo, guys. Rizbo's been alone the entire time. Can Rizbo channel his inner Audrey... Thank you so much for watching. Go operate operationally. Enjoy the rest of your day or night. Cheers, and have a good one.